Welcome back. Philip Richards wrote the show. I promised this last week, but it just didn't happen. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. But before we get started in this amazing home run derby video, um, and actually talk about batting tips and tricks for MLB 13 this show, because I know a lot of you guys have asked for it, I want to just give you a quick scheduled rundown of uh, some live streams that are going to be happening this week for me. The first one's going to happen tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the NHL 14 demo comes out tomorrow, so we're going to be live streaming that around 8 p.m. Eastern over on twitch.tv slash uh, This Wednesday, instead of doing a Ken Griffey the Third live stream on YouTube, I'm going to be live streaming P. Rich on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern on my Twitch channel. Um... P. Rich has just made the playoffs again for the Atlanta Braves, so we're going to live stream the entire playoff run Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, so check that out. Uh, and then a live stream Friday night around 8 p.m. Eastern, and that is going to be the season ticket download version of uh, Madden 25. That drops then. We're going to try to do some... Um, do some Whatever we can do in it. <laughs> I think everything's open except for Ultimate Team. Uh, so we can try out all the different game modes. Try the new um, Be a Pro or whatever it's called in Madden 25. It was Connected Careers last year. Um, but I think they've done some work on the uh, Connected Careers when you choose to be a uh, rookie coming into the league. So we're going to try that out. Maybe try some connected careers, coaching, and all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll play the game. We'll put it through its paces and uh, play the whole thing. So those are the three streams. Just to recap again, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, NHL 14 demo. We're doing that. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be doing P-Rich playoff run. And then Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be doing Madden 25 pre-release season ticket download um i'll have a little description down in the uh <laughs> or <laughs> some uh words down in the description that kind of explain all the different things and remember all these are going to be on the twitch channel no youtube stream this week no kg3 live stream this week so Make sure you come over to twitch.tv slash babe, hit that follow button. Three live streams this week, all scheduled, all planned, all ready to go. So hopefully I will see you guys. So I figured I would take the time in this video, since it's a home run derby, very self-explanatory, I don't need to be talking about it. I'll use this time to talk about hitting in MLB 13, the show. Um, all the time in my live streams, people have asked, um, can you give us some tips and tricks? on hitting, moving up in the lineup, moving up in uh, in the show from double A AA to triple A to the big leagues. Uh, so I'm going to give you a rundown of all the things that I do in this game that helped me and uh, hopefully it'll help you a little bit. Now I did a similar video on MLB 12 the show. It got a lot of views, a lot of a praise, a lot of people said that it helped them. So hopefully this will help you guys as well. It's very similar to 12 the show because it's really the same sort of uh, things that I go about doing um, for me in hitting. It's really the same between 12 and 13. But uh, there's a slight change here and there. So first of all, you need to find a batting stance that fits your play style, your swing style, and your timing really. Um, let me just go over my settings first. I hit on all-star difficulty. I use uh, timing hitting. And I um, do not have guest pitch turned on. So those are basically the three big settings that I use. Uh, timing is basically you can use the square button to hit power, the X button to have a normal swing, and then the circle button to try to do contact swing. If you've been in zone or in uh, pure analog, um, I don't believe you use the X button at all to do any of that, so um, that's why when I say I use the X button to swing, it's because I'm using timing hitting. So timing hitting is all based on timing, obviously. <laughs> um, timing is based on your vision, and it's based on um, 
you know where the pitch is located if it's out of the strike zone you're not going to hit it nearly as good um that's one of the disadvantages the timing because if you're using zone hitting and you can chase balls out of the zone and still have decent contact on it like if they pitch inside you can move your zone inside move your hands inside and still get a quality hit from it uh timing is all based on timing obviously so if your timing's off just a little bit it's going to affect the way that the ball leaves your bat also it's on vision uh, you see that yellow circle when you swing uh, that is your contact zone and obviously the higher the contact you have the bigger that yellow circle is going to be but this year they've really improved how much vision affects your guy um, so if you'll notice you swing over top of a pitch and the yellow circle of your zone is way above where the ball ended up being vision can help that at some point because your vision basically determines where the ball is going to be so when you're seeing that ball come in if you're thinking it's low you're going to swing low uh if your vision's off it could be you swing high so definitely this year you need to put points into vision along with uh your clutch and um all that stuff so you got to make sure that you've uh are not ignoring that i know in the older versions of the show you could kind of ignore vision and the uh discipline or decision making one because uh those were really used more towards the computer when you were simming uh, but this year you definitely need to put points into vision so i found that out a little bit late so i had to catch up with the vision part and uh it's really helped me not get as many strikeouts but um going back to uh the batting stance. Batting stances is very important because every batting stance has a slightly different uh, timing window. So if you're using timing and you're using a batting stance that takes a big wind up or takes a while before it gets to swing, that's affecting your timing. So if you're finding that you're late on balls all the time or early on balls all the time, a lot of times if you switch your batting stance you might be able to come out of that because uh, you could use the same timing that you're used to using but using a different batting stance can change that for you. So if you are struggling a little bit at the plate, try switching your batting stance to uh, something else. And there's plenty of good ones out there. Um, obviously, I use generic, I believe, 106. If you look at my first video, I'm still using the exact same batting stance as I used then. So, But that's probably one of the biggest things is the batting stance. Um, another thing you can try changing if... Um, you're late or early on pitches so like say let's say you, you get a lot of fastballs and you're always late on those you can go into your sliders and change the pitch speed so if you're late on balls a lot um, try turning the pitch speed down just a little bit or if you're very early on pitch on balls like if your timing's always early bump that speed up and that's exactly what I had to do if you remember I've talked about this patch a lot of times and people still bring the patch up to me because it was it really affected timing hitting so much it was unbelievable but as soon as that patch came out I was um, early on everything and I'm still to this day early on a lot of stuff I just I don't know what it is but uh, that really affected my game and then it was until I went into my sliders and bumped my pitch speed all the way up to the top is when I really started to come back around obviously it still took me some more time because even with the pitch speed all the way up I still find myself late on pitches quite often so um, that is huge so if if your timing is always off try f try changing that pitch speed along with uh, your batting stance um, a few other things um, comes to mind is like your approach at the plate and I am guilty of sin when it comes to this <laughs> and uh, I, I try to work on it so much and I think I've gotten a little bit better at this because I've turned guest pitch off uh, I use guest pitch in MLB 12 to show as a big time crutch to uh, kind of protect the bottom half of the plate a lot of times I would I mean <laughs> every single time in MLB 12 the show I would select I would guess pitch a fastball down in the zone. And what that would do for me is if a pitch was going to be below the strike zone, I would get a notification because my guess pitch was telling me 
hey, you guess down in the zone, here's where the ball's going to end up. So I was able to lay off a lot of those pitches low in the zone. This year I find myself swinging a lot more at those type of pitches because I'm not trained enough yet to read those type of pitches because for the last three or four years, all I've done is use guess pitch and guess low in the zone. So I never had to bother reading those type of pitches. I just use guess pitch to kind of force me or not really force me but help me not have to deal with reading those type of pitches then I really only had to focus on reading if it was going to be inside outside or above uh, the strike zone so it's taken me quite a bit of time and I'm still bad at it if you watch me uh, live stream there's a lot of times where I swing at pitches in the dirt because I just can't read that pitch um, so I suggest right away turning off guess pitch. It really affects the way that you read pitches, balls, and strikes. It's a huge, huge uh, crutch that if you really think about it, if you turn that off, you're going to struggle at first, but in the long run, you're going to be much better. I obviously turned this year's off. I was going to just continue using it, but um, they really changed the mechanics of how guess pitch works in MLB 13, the show, compared to older the show titles uh and the big thing was that uh now you have to have the the pitch type and pitch location correctly before it will flash onto your screen uh, last year they would give you an indication if your pitch type was correct and they would also give you a different indication if your pitch location was correct so even if you guessed wrong on one of them you would still know that your pitch type or pitch location was correct uh, they changed that this year where you have to have both of them right for it to notify you that you are right so a lot of times that didn't work out for me because I would pick low in the zone and a fastball but if it was low in the zone and a curveball it would screw me over so my suggestion turn off guest pitch and start to learn how to read pitches and learn how to uh, determine if a pitch is going to be in the zone or out of the zone because the biggest thing for hitting in MLB 13 the show and really any MLB the show is patience. Patience is the key to having a good at bat. It's the key to getting a good hit. You have to be patient at the plate no matter what. And <laughs> say I say this all the time and I don't follow that. I swing at first pitches way too often. But you need to take pitches. Um... If you can get ahead in the zone, or I mean ahead in the count, you're going to have a much better chance of getting a good hit. When you get ahead in the count, you put all the pressure on the pitcher to throw balls over the plate. And once they're over the plate, that's when you can have your best uh, opportunity to have good contact on the ball. If you get behind in the count, they're going to throw them on the corners, they're going to throw them a bit outside, a bit inside, where you even think if it is a strike it's going to be one of those balls that is very very difficult to hit so the key to having good success and that will be 13 the show at the plate is be patient and the only way to do that is to start learning how to read pitches read if it's a breaking ball or a fast ball so you can affect your time or change your timing up a little bit be able to read if that ball is going to be inside outside high low and know when to hold off, and know when not to swing, know when to take a pitch, and know how to get ahead in the count. If you can do that, you're going to have so much more success in this game. Um, <laughs> this really the, the bottom line in hitting is that. Um, be patient at the plate, and you're going to find yourself doing so much better. And if you have a bad day, you know what? Turn the game off. If you continue to have bad time, uh, over and over and over again it's not going to get any better without uh, taking a break because you're going to just keep pressing and keep trying to get more and more and more uh, aggressive and it's just going to be very very bad for you so make sure that if you're having a bad time at the plate turn the game off wait a couple hours and come back when you're calmed down because if you're aggressive in this game that's when you start going into slumps and hitting very very badly uh, and before I go, a lot of people ask, how do you get move up to so fast? There's really no trick to it. Uh, there's a couple things you have to do. You first have to have decent numbers. It doesn't even have to be spectacular numbers. I mean, you can be sub 300 hitting 
and get moved up. That's not a big deal. It's not the numbers as much as it is. Number one advancement goals, you have to do every single advancement goal. Not just three out of four, not four out of five. You have to do all of the advancement goals that they give you. And you have to do that like three times in a row. The biggest issue though is not every time that's going to be all you have to do. There's plenty of times where you be on a team that has people in front of you um, that they find is better than what you can bring to the table. Even if you're hitting much better numbers and you have better stats and all that kind of stuff, the team is going to decide when they move you up. If they do not have room for you, they're not going to move you up. So if you look at uh, P. Rich, P. Rich was in a unique situation because he was with a team that was stupid, which is the uh, Chicago Cubs. <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. So they moved me up anyways, even though they had a stud uh, young shortstop but uh, I think they did that on purpose because their third baseman wasn't any good so they were gonna kind of move one of us to third base and one to shortstop so that can happen even if you have somebody really good in front of you there's a chance that you can get shuffled around like that um, so you have that and uh, you have KG3 who was just a fantastic double-A and triple-A player. Probably the best numbers I've ever had ever in the minor leagues was with KG3. And uh, he did not get moved up until the second season. I mean, I did every single advancement goal. I had amazing numbers. But I was on a team um, that just did not have any room for me at all on the roster. It was the, um, the Red Sox. They were completely stacked in the, all the outfield positions. They had no room for me. And it didn't matter what I did. I did not get moved up. So there's going to be times where that happens. There's really not much you can do about it, honestly. You you just have to do all of your advancement goals every time they ask for it and just play the best. And really, a lot of people say, well, man, I want to get moved up. It's, you know, it's been, I've been playing for three months or whatever. I've been in AAA three months my rookie season and I haven't got moved up yet. You want to stay in a triple-A as much as you can, or double-A. Um, hitting is so much easier down there, you're going to get a lot more training points to work with because you're getting those extra at-bats that you wouldn't see if you were on the MLB club because you'd just be coming off the bench, so you would not get nearly the opportunity to uh, get training points to get better at the game. So <clears throat> thank your lucky stars that you get to stay in triple-A and double-A longer than normal because when you hit the MLB you're not going to have as hard of a time uh, hitting those pitchers because all of your stats and training and attributes are all going to be much better than they would be if you got moved up early because uh, it's much more difficult to hit in the MLB than it is sing or double A and triple A so much easier so all the time that you struggle down in uh, you know when you get up to MLB if you had all of that extra training points and attributes, it just makes it so much easier. So that's my advice on getting moved up. Uh, there's really no trick to it. It's just it's it's luck of the draw based on what team you're on. And really, trading doesn't happen when you want it. It only happens when the CPU wants it to happen. So really trying to force a trade or getting traded, there's no magic to that either. It's just, it's just, uh, it just happens when it happens. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If it helped you out at all, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, we will see you Tuesday night, NHL 14 live stream. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Peace.